this is the last panel of the day. I hope you're still alive. Um, so welcome to Antoine Delaunay, to Alison Cook, well, you already know her, and Roxane Julien. Uh, thanks for joining us. The, so this panel about strategies for citizen engagement, uh, it goes to Alison Cook's keynote. Um, and Alison, as Alison showed us, citizen engagement is not a rational a consequence of a sudden awareness about s some issues. Uh, it's much more complicated than that. It means that it's not enough to inform, to let people know, uh, to spread the news about or spread the bad news. Um, it's not enough. Uh, mobili mobilization, engagement means movement. And our guess is that collaborative practice can help. But let's see uh, what we say. So uh, first, I'd like to ask you to introduce yourself and your project in a few, uh, few minutes. Antoine, do you want to start? Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. uh, hello, my name is Antoine. <laughs> I first uh, shall apologize for my French accents, very strong. And um, so I've done a business school, and then uh, I've, I have to admit that I didn't like citizen engagement much, because like, I felt that there was as much ego competition as in the corporate world, and I, uh, I had this notion of sacrifice, because my parents were social workers, and uh, I didn't like citizen engagement much. But then I met uh, Leila, uh, who's going to make a speech tomorrow, and she, she told me about social entrepreneurship and about this Make Sense project. Does someone know Make Sense in the room? Not that much. So Make Sense is about meeting social entrepreneurs around the world and understand their challenges. And then once we uh, understand their challenges, we upload their challenges on the, our platform, www.makesense.org, and we empower uh, volunteers to organize brainstorming sessions so that we can solve this, uh, this challenge and help this social entrepreneur. So it, uh, it's a new way of uh, engaging citizens that is not boring, that is funny, that uh, gives room for creativity. And I learned so much within this, uh, this movement that I then created, with, along with friends, Disco Soup. Does someone know Disco Soup? <laughs> wow. Uh, Disco Soup is about uh, picking up uh, discarded fruit and veggies and uh, putting up some wigs, some uh, loud music, some tables and inviting everybody to cook together salads, soups, juices that are given away for free to fight against food waste and raise public awareness. Uh, so this is it. Thank you. And, uh, I, I have to admit that I had so much fun for the last four years during those two movements that I really love citizen engagement now. <laughs> but not the old-fashioned citizen engagement. Exactly. That's what you mean. <laughs> okay. So, Alison, well, a brief introduction because probably some of uh, our audience already have uh, understood what Star Wars was about, but please. Of course. Um, so, again, my name is Allison Cook. I work with the Story of Stuff project. Um, and for me, citizen engagement is incredibly important, as it is for our organization, um, because the systems that we use, whether they're technological or economic um, or political, are populated by people. Um, and so figuring out a way to get people involved in meaningful and uh, fun and functional ways is an important question, I think, for all of us to ask ourselves, but especially when we're thinking about how to make the world a better place. Great. Roxane, <laughs> um, your turn. So uh, I represent a new project uh, that has two months now and that I created with Severin. And it's a, it's a new concept of crowd timing. Uh, what is it? It's, uh, it's the idea that uh, we wanted to give a tool to all the solidarity initiatives, whoever they are, if they are NGOs or citizens, and we want to help them to gather people around the actions. Uh, and the, we decided to focus on small action, I mean short-term action, uh, and collective actions so that it will be easy to people to participate and to come with friends and family. And so it's called crowd timing because we take small contribution of time to have a big impact on, on, on project. 
and uh, we call it crowd timing as well because the reference is uh, of crowdfunding and we use exactly the same uh, scheme. Uh, it's campaign uh, functioning with a limited um, time, but we solicit people not for their money, but for their time, which is actually a, a wealth that we all have. And so it's, in, it's quite interesting to work on these resources. And it's a collaborative um, platform so that every citizen can participate to project or create their own project and so start their, uh, their path of, uh, of citizen engagement. So you're a platform and you're working with also other organization that citizen can pro can suggest can propose their own project but also organizations right yeah it's it's can it's you give free. some examples maybe? actually we, we started working as well with some social entrepreneurs so it's it's quite open uh, well one of the action actually is a little bit small uh, advertisement for your project but it's next uh, week for example we gather like more than 100 people to um, to collect cigarettes on the streets uh, or the last, I don't know the name of the, the, the end of cigarettes. And uh, it's, it's like a big action, it's a group of five people and they, they just collect things and they sensibilize other people that every time you throw a cigarette then you pollute, uh, contaminate 500 liters of water. And so it's more actions which supposed to have a big impact because in two hours you will then sensibilize other people and so have um, a scrolling impact. Okay. Well, the first question I would like to ask you uh, is why? Why do we need to create more citizen engagement? And uh, why have you personally chosen to dedicate a lot of your time, <laughs> probably a lot, um, to uh, this goal? So, who want to start? Okay, keep okay. on. Um, for me, it, it was really important to work on this uh, scheme for two reasons. Um, the first one is that today um, we, we have to, to take action because um, uh, no choice is a choice. And even if you don't care about all these uh, thematics about uh, society, environment and stuff, finally, even if you just close your ears, you will buy something and then you will be part of the scheme. So, by thinking that uh, no choice is a choice, it's important that everybody finally take uh, a decision. And the second thing is that um, I think politics has changed a lot and now we, we don't believe in politics anymore. Our generation are quite disenchanted. And so we need to, be, uh, to stop being passive citizen and to start being active citizen. And so we want uh, through this platform to help people, as I was saying, like doing the first step uh, forward the, the engagement. What about you, Antoine? I first don't believe in the ability of mega structure, uh, should they be corporate or ethical, to, to be flexible and clever enough to adapt to a changing world. Um, this is the first, but why did I dedicate so much time? Uh, because uh, it was fun, because uh, <laughs> it's a really egoistic point of view, but uh, my, um, it's so much more interesting that when I was an uh, informational uh, system uh, consultant in La Défense, uh, it's just for fun. No. <laughs> Which is a good reason, and that's something we need to keep in mind because that's one of the main um, useful tools, fun, <laughs> to, to provide citizen engagement. And so I think on some level I answered part of your question initially is that, you know, all of these systems that we're using are populated by people and so it becomes incredibly important to engage them in how we use them. Um, in terms of why I personally got involved, it's because I really like people. Um, I think that there's, you know, something along the lines of what you were saying is that it's more fun. Um, then, you know, playing around with spreadsheets or slide decks is that when you're doing citizen engagement work, you get to interact with people and their fears and flaws, but also their quirky senses of humor um, and kind of build stories and connections and develop real relationships that make life a lot better. Thank you. <laughs> um, now I would like to ask you, Roxanne, a question. Um, so you're still building full maps. It's, it's the youngest project of the three. Um, but why building full maps? You, I think you probably um, investigated uh, a lot of time into 
knowing the needs of the projects. So wh what is your feedback about this? And also, what do you think the, um, um, the role of the online tools is for citizen engagement? Um, well, I would say that we, we figured out there, there's a big gap between people saying that they want to change the world and actually their program on the weekend because there's the birthday of your best friend and then you finally want to sleep or whatever. And so actually like giving time every weekend or every Tuesday or on a repeated time is, is quite difficult. And so the, the first uh, thing we, we figured out is that Uh, to start uh, this engagement um, path, like you need to start with small contribution. And so finally, if you help people just giving like one hour on a Tuesday, then they will feel good as if they gave like one full year, but then it, it, will, it would start. The, the second point is that there's a lot of people who don't know where to go when they want to help. So they may have a big idea of the biggest uh, NGOs in France, but then These uh, NGOs are, uh, they have a lot of uh, demand and so actually they don't really care about you or they, or they give you extra mission that is not really interesting. And so uh, there's a lack of uh, knowledge finally of uh, who are doing things, of the small NGO, the small, or the person just doing something just near to you. So, so that's why we, as well we decided to focus um, the platform on the actions, on the thematics and not on the people doing it. And uh, at last I will completely agree with you. I think fun um, is a big part. Like uh, until like today, like you had to suffer to help other people and uh, you had to refuse to do a lot of things because you wanted to change the world. But now we definitely realize that uh, you can be just a happy person and want to change a life. You can You can enjoy partying and change uh, the word the day after. I mean, it's, it's not um, inconsistent today. And so we, with this format of small uh, action and strong actions, finally, we, it's, it opens a big door of, of creativity. Of We can sensibilize people to zero waste doing a huge picnic or doing a huge party or doing things that definitely interest people. And when you see on Facebook the number of people that... Uh, attend to parties and the number of people attending to, to social things. I mean, there's something that we need to understand about that, like the format and the fun of what you're doing uh, does not impact on the, f the, the, the real thematic, uh, on the real things you're doing. So uh, that's why full mobs just uh, mix all these things. And, and I, as a tool, I think it's uh, something that people have to, to take uh, to create more things and we're just here to to motivate them. And so to answer the, the, the second part of your question, I think uh, FullMobs is, is di a digital tool because I think it's really, we all connected today, but uh, it's important to use digital tools to finally do something in the real life. And so mm, a big part of, uh, of the FullMob ambition is, uh, is in one click just to, to gather communities to make big action, new actions in the real life. So, so, yeah. Uh, maybe, Alison, you want to add something about the, the role of online tools? Because uh, from what I understood, the citizen muscle bootcamp happens online only, or is it both online and offline? Yeah, so right now it's an exclusively online program um, that you can do. It is a four-week program, um, but we've run a little over 2,000 people through it in the early beta tests. And one of the uh, kind of clear and resounding pieces of feedback that we've gotten is that it needs to be a both and, um, that people really like the online tools, the way that it provides flexibility, because you can do it when works for you, you can go through the lessons, but that, that strong sense of community is just really hard to replicate online. And so that the kind of what, as we continue to iterate with the program, we'll be doing in-person sessions that are also developed in conjunction with the online content um, because different pieces have different strengths um, and we want to be able to really kind of cater to both as we're thinking about how to engage more people. Uh, could, could you tell a little bit more about um, what, what is the Citizen Mass of Bootcamp, like the contents, how it works? Is it like a MOOC or... It's very similar to a MOOC, which is a massive open online course. 
Um, and so basically for us, the, the kind of impetus to create the program came from this idea that we were kind of hearing constantly from people that they didn't know what to do. And we happened to know that there was an incredible universe of activist training that exists in the world. Um, but the problem that was that it wasn't reaching people. It was either in dusty old pamphlets on someone's bookshelf, um, or it was like in some trainer's head, um, or you had to be able to pay you know, $400 to go away for the weekend. Um, and so we wanted to take this content and make it as accessible as possible. Um, and so it's a, the first week is about connecting with your purpose, the things that you really care about. Um, you're going through kind of a series of different exercises, asking questions about yourself, you know, envisioning possible futures. The second week is all about developing your talking skills. So how do you get better at talking about the issues that you care about? Uh, the third week is about growing your network so that you can connect to more people. So it's not just you all by yourself trying to save the world, which is not an effective strategy. Um, and then the fourth week is all just about thinking about how you put that plan into action. Um, so what are the concrete steps that you're going to be taking? And so we've had, you know, a Thousands of people sign up for the course. Thousands of people aren't making it all the way through the end of the course, so there's some work to do um, because there is always that gap between the things that you think you're going to do and the things that you can actually do, um, which I think is also kind of points, again, to the need for in-person activities because it just creates so much more accountability um, and just a good time. Okay, so anyone can join the course? Anyone can join. The next course starts on Tuesday, May 26th. Okay, we'll be there. Um, Antoine, uh, I would like to ask you um, about Mexen's business model and how do you uh, preserve um, the members' engagement, engagement while bi building this business model? Um, I would start with just getting people engaged and then I'll talk a little bit about business models but, uh, and I'll make a link with uh, more with Disco Soup than uh, with Make Sense, if you don't mind. Um, first of all, to engage people, I think you have to, to, make, to have a good moment. Like my former roommate, he didn't care a lot about food waste, but he was, uh, there was a lot of nice girls in the Disco Soup and he, he always wanted, because that was the best way to chat up girls, it was to go to Disco Soup rather than in bars. So uh, having a good moment day-to-day, uh, -day, and uh, that means that we have to create a benevolent frame using uh, violent-less communication and uh, techniques of, uh, of group sharing uh, ideas and so on and so forth. Uh, the second thing is you have to, to dream big. You have to make concrete action. It's not just about being a community and that's it. You have to be a community and achieve stuff together. Otherwise, you won't have um, something to celebrate for. Um, so dream big, uh, achieve concrete stuff. I would say the third thing is that you have to build on, on values, not necessarily on process. Um, as far as Disco Soup is concerned, like we created a 10-point frame, which is called uh, Les Disco Mandements. And anyone, uh, as long as it's free, it's with the music, with discarded fruit and veggies, uh, no commercial logo, anyone in the world can upload on methodology on our website, discosoup.org, and, uh, and make its own Disco Soup that is relevant in its own neighborhood. Because like people in the favelas in northern Brazil don't make the same Disco Soup as in South Korea or uh, uh, happening right now, there's a disco soup on La Croisette in Cannes. <laughs> uh, so uh, you have to give room for creativity and adaptability to the local scale because um, you can make like, I don't think you can make relevant action and um, uh, at, um, applying the same pattern everywhere. And uh, as far as business models are concerned, I'll talk about um, the model that I were developed by MakeSense, which is really interesting. Uh, the core action of, act of MakeSense is uh, sourcing those social entrepreneurs and organizing those, uh, those works, creativity workshops, which we call holdups. We are gangsters and we're taking people's ideas. And it's for free and it will stay this way. But um, some people, they get so passionate uh, and they develop some skills, some know-how, and they want to make a living out of it. Because it's sometimes, I, I experienced this myself, as I was, a, it, I had a two or three full-time job, my uh, day job 
when I was working in, uh, for multinationals. And uh, at night, I, was, uh, I had a second job. And uh, doing those two things together is really hard. So you have to, within your movement, you have to allow people to, to make them one and to earn a living out of their passion. That's really important. But uh, there's a risk that your core action is going to suffer from those other uh, jobs that's being, that are being created. So the model that's been developed is that as long as you go deeper into the social project of the association, in case of Disco Soup, for instance, is fighting against food waste, you can innovate and propose um, to touch a new targets with new methodologies, and then you have to formalize uh, what you're going to take from the community and what you're going to bring to the community. For instance, uh, a friend of mine whose name is Colette, she's, made, uh, she's making jam out of discarded fruits. And so she used some of the know-how and of the fame of disco soup. And on the other hand, she brings some methodologies. And like uh, last weekend, like she made jams for 1,000 people. For, for Parisians, uh, the name of the project is Confiture, Confiture Rebelle. Rebelle. Um, so d this is a good way to make people not just uh, grasp the ideas and strength of the community and use it, but go deeper into the, the subject and innovate and find ways of, uh, of earning uh, one's living with, uh, with its passion. And it's really important. Because otherwise, like, makes sense. I, I think the average age is something like 25. And, um, and it's really time, uh, time consuming. So what's going to happen in 10 years when those uh, people, if we have children, and they won't have so much time. They, they won't be able to have a family, a job, and a full-time benevolent uh, volunteer activity. So you have to make room for personal achievements uh, in, your, in your association, even if it's non-profit. Um. Alison, um, do you observe exactly the same uh, characteristic? The Star of Stuff? Yeah, I would say that generally speaking, kind of what we're seeing in our work at the Story of Stuff and, and our network is international, is that there's a real need to figure out how do you do good work and make a living? Um, and I think that there are challenges with the nonprofit model, there are challenges with a business model, um, but I think that it's part of why I'm excited to see the expansion of B Corps and you know, socially innovative businesses that are trying to figure out how do you do good work, um, how do you protect the planet, um, and also not kill your soul. Um, because you need to be able to do both because the only thing that we can't really change is that there's only 40 hours in a day. It's 40. There's, there, are, are, there are 24. I wish that there was 40. <laughs> um, so I, I would say that that's kind of one of the real challenges that we face is that there's only so much time. And so you have to figure out how you're going to spend that time. Um, and and I, I think there's an increasing percentage of people who are really committed to figuring out how to marry um, what they love and then what they do for work. Um, Roxanne, um just to finish with business models, um, what is Fulmer's business model, or what will it be? What do you think it will be? Because the scent is only the beginning. Well, uh, as for today, uh, it was important for us not to be free because uh, when it's free, the data is the business model and we don't want at all to be in that field. So uh, people give what they want. Um, we, we don't really believe that it would be 100% of the business model, so we're actually... Donation-based. Yeah, donation-based, sorry. Um, in, the next, in the future, I, I mean, uh, this year, the, the, the idea is to make different tests and to know which idea will be the, 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 the good business model. One of the options is to use the technology and to use the platform um, but for other use, it might be to mobilize employees in a company, it might be mobilize citizens for, for, uh, for a, a town or something like that. So that would be uh, 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 about the technology. Uh, one other thing is, is um, but it's, it's still an idea, so I may not be really clear, but is to, uh, to innovate as well with the, 
the way we finance uh, the the project and to uh, to create a way that when you give two hours, it finance as well the project with the equivalent of two hours, uh, with a, a, um, a system we're trying to to create between companies or other people, because some want to give time, some want to give money, so we can maybe um, put together all the the this ID and to to finance project. Then we have another. Uh, well, we have five or six ideas, so I will not develop. You'll try them one by one. But, um, yeah, but yeah. No, September is coming. <laughs> okay. Anton, you want to ask something? What's really great about Make Sense, which is far more mature and business friendly uh, as a disco soup, uh, as far as this social business on top of the core action is concerned, is that the, um, the business, the social enterprise they've built around Make Sense are uh, functioning so well that nowadays it allows, makes sense to be almost financially independent. And that's really important because it helps us to, to keep our liberty of action and liberty of speech. And this is what's uh, really important also for Disco Soup. Um, because like we resent in making partnerships and losing our uh, integrity and uh, ability to, to give uh, advices. <laughs> to either corporation or state. So uh, financial independence can also be, uh, it's not only a way of um, making a lasting involvement of the people, it's also a way of having a lasting impact because you have um, more freedom of speech. If I, if I may have something, uh, at the beginning we've been really criticized to work on uh, on this uh, citizen engagement being a, a company. And actually we, we are quite proud actually of, of being a company because uh, we're not waiting for the government to help us or we're not willing, uh, waiting for other people to help us. And we really believe that it's, uh, it will be so crucial in the next year to work on this uh, thing that we can create um, a system which is uh, financially and yeah, sustain, sustainable. And uh, it's, it's, I think it's, uh, we are in transition, so that's uh, the, word, uh, the word of, uh, of this festival. And we have to use more creativity to, to figure out new business models and things. And uh, if we use all our intelligence to thinking about this, uh, these issues, I think we can definitely create uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of tools and, and a lot of new tools to all these uh, issues. So business model is one thing. It has an impact um, on citizen engagement as well. But governance is another thing. And what do you think um, is, a, is there a link uh, between the, government, the governance of the movement itself or the organization itself and members' engagement? I do think so. Like half of uh, the volunteers of Disco Soup, they were not interested at all in food waste or in agriculture. Lots of people who joined us, they joined us because, like as I say, it was fun and because uh, there was no petit chef, <laughs> there was no chief, there was no order, and they felt like they could, we could achieve anything together. And that no hierarchy. No hierarchy, exactly. So um, we are trying, from the very beginning, we wanted to, to create an alternative to the conventional uh, pyramidal structure that exists not only in corporate world, but also in uh, most conventional NGOs. And uh, I think people are fed up with that and they want to do what they do when they can do it. And um, as far as volunteer engagement, like I, I, Disco Soup got no money and we got no disco police, so we can't force people in doing something. We have to make them dream about doing something and make them feel responsible about doing something together. So uh, from the very beginning, we are like studying with the uh, Université du Nou, with a technique of violentless communication, and um, there is no chef, no hierarchy, and each local group organizes itself as it wants, and, uh, and it's really important. So it's really a model of distributed organization, so distributed engagement uh, of people. Uh, Alison, wh what about uh, the story of stuff? 
So we're a mix, I would say. Uh, there's, you know, there's a certainly a hierarchy in our immediate organization of, of nine people, um, but that also we're an organization that's really committed to the community and to all of our content is licensed under Creative Commons and we encourage sharing and reproduction. Um, but also that there's a deep commitment to the work of the community, which is global. Um, and kind of one of the projects that we've just started recently is a project that we're beta testing called Community Launchpad, where we lift up different projects from all over the globe um, and provide them with attention and resources and media training and financial assistance um, to kind of highlight the need for these solutions-based community projects all over the globe, which are as kind of diverse as a solar street lamp project in neglected neighborhoods in New York uh, to a uh, add-on to your Google Maps that tracks the amount of carbon um, that your particular mode of transportation is taking. And so I think there's a real shift organizationally into really wanting to move towards more distributed organizing and letting the community drive more of what we do. Okay, thank you. Now I would like to open up to you guys. Uh, is there any questions in the audience? Yes, right in front. Hi, uh, I'm Lama from Denmark. I have a question to you two. I'm not sure you really answered like the business model of makes sense. Is it that people like the people that host the different uh, holdups? Do, do they get money from the businesses or how is that financed? And to you is when people uh, can, can sign you speak up, a little bit louder? Oh yes. yeah, of, of course. Uh, and you have to um, when people they sign up with their time saying I'm gonna you know show up Tuesday at two o'clock to help out with something. If they don't show up. What is the you know what's the system of, of tracking that or I don't know letting people know whether these people are reliable or not? So yeah. Um, you you can get money for organizing a hold up for a social entrepreneur and you can get money for organizing a disco soup. Um, what we uh, uh, what we allow people and what we encourage people to do is to create to target new people with new methodologies. For instance, as far as makes sense is concerned, like uh, for those who've been to, to school, <laughs> most of you, I guess, uh, you work on business cases. Uh, let's imagine that you're the managing director of Canon in 1998. That's fucking boring. Uh, since school, they, organize, they imagine the way of like making student work are really concrete cases of exas, uh, existing current social entrepreneurs. And so they are selling those uh, business cases to schools and they get money from that and they give a part of their turnover to the core, the, the core association which is Make Sense. And they are, they are like other, social, we call them social business on top of Make Sense. It's a whole galaxy and uh, they're giving money to the core actions. And Roxanne? And, um, actually, uh, we have uh, some people who don't show up, uh, around uh, 15%. Uh, and that's why we are a collective action. I mean, if you want to gather 1,000 people, even if 15% uh, don't show up, you still have a lot of people. So it was important to have this. And then we work on the user experience, um, not to, to be like Facebook, when you just attend 10 things and you don't go to not even one. And so in, in all the user experience, we dedicate it to solidarity uh, um, mobilization. So people don't go on the platform with the same uh, motivations. And, um, and yeah, actually, yeah, we're working on the user experience for, for this. And at the beginning, we were thinking uh, on a model when we would pay people to come and say, OK, we can make uh, just a, kind of work of solidarity and then we realized that the, the the biggest motivation when people give time to volunteer is what he will win for himself about self-esteem about uh, uh, values that he can share with children if they go with children or with friends or, or even like the status he can get 
um, uh, among his friends, but mainly for self-esteem. And so I've actually, it's the biggest motivation ever. And that's, uh, maybe if it's raining, that's gonna be difficult, but a lot of people we, will show up. Um, so yeah. Antoine, do you have uh, this kind of issue with the holdups? Like, do you have sometimes people not showing up? Uh, that much? People sometimes don't show up. That's sometimes good because sometimes we have too many people. <laughs> um, and uh, it's also happened that uh, people um, don't show up at uh, Disco Soup. Uh, the one who was supposed to go to the supermarket at six uh, you don't uh, you don't wake up, so each disco soup is a it's a surprise, <laughs> and uh, that's uh, but that's part of the game. That's part of uh, the day that after can, you laugh about it. That can create conflict. Uh, conflicts no, because uh, we know that uh, we all volunteer and uh, we've been putting. Uh, on the, pre uh, the, the first years, we've been putting ourselves on a kind of pressure because, like, we we had the feeling that we could achieve anything and that uh, we had such a huge impact. And then we then realized that we are, were only making soups and that uh, we could make other soups other days and that we couldn't suffer from our engagement and that the most precious thing in our community it's not the... the KPI is about uh, soups and salad, it's the uh, people in, in itself. So we encourage people to take vacation and not to wake up if they're too tired and we're gonna find a way. Wow, it's a feel-good community. Um, a feel-good community. A what? A feel-good, feel <laughs> okay. Um, another question from you? Yes, yes over there. Hi, um, especially for full mobs, um, do you think uh, Full Mobs is in competition with NGOs or local associations, or it's complementary? It's completely com complementary. Uh, our uh, position is to be a tool for all the one who wants to make things. So actually, uh, uh, when an NGO wants to mobilize, I have a trouble with this word, but <laughs> when an when a NGO wants to, to gather people to make um, an action, we just help it to make it stronger. So actually, we're working already with a, a lot of uh, NGOs. And um, so there's no conflict as for the moment. And the idea is to go to citizen engagement. Uh, to, to have both kind of engagement. Yeah, I, I can also give a feedback on this because I, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm actually working from, for one of these traditional NGOs, <laughs> like the story of stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and actually, Full Moms came to us uh, first and said, hello, we are doing this. Uh, are you interested? Could, could it be useful uh, to, to you? So... And we said yes, of course. And now we are trying uh, a first uh, thing together uh, in a few days. We'll see how it uh, how it works. And so this is all about cooperation instead of uh, competition, Actually, of course. Uh, yeah. Well, what's re what is really interesting in the campaign she, she uh, organization is doing with us is that it's a collaboration actually with two organizations, and they both have their own website, and so. It will be. Uh, it could be an issue to know on which website you you will talk about uh, uh, the action. And uh, with full mobs, actually, it's neutral. It's a tool, and then it also opened the doors of a lot of m of more collaboration between uh, the existing uh, organization because they just want to gather people for the climate, for the um, racism, or w independently of who they are. So actually, it's. Very complimentary, I think. Another question? Yes, right in the center. Um, I wanted to ask whether there is any activities that you wouldn't um, allow people... Uh, could you okay, repeat, I repeat that louder? Is there any activities that you wouldn't um, like to gather people for because they're against your values? Or is it, can, you just, can anyone just um, have an idea for an activity? It could even maybe be um, for like a protest against uh, foreigners, for example. 
Um, do you have some sort of um, um, system to not promote these ideas or do you just allow any ideas? Uh, actually, we, we use the word solidarity because uh, uh, it's a positive approach of, uh, of what we're doing. So it's, uh, uh, the rule is that uh, if you do something for something, then you're accepted. If you do something against something, then it's, uh, it, it, it will be harder to, to do it on, on full mobs. And, uh, and the positive approach is really important. Then it's quite hard sometimes, and we didn't have the case actually till yet, so uh, I don't really know, but we, um, we wrote um, um, a charter, yeah, and uh, to avoid uh, like politics uh, to use it or to avoid like misuse of the platform. Uh, as I say, like as for today, it's more organization. But as for to, well, for tomorrow, we really hope that citizen uh, really uh, use this platform. And so, um, uh, as you, well, I really like when you say that uh, we have to use more creativity to uh, local action. And so, it's a lot of things that um, that we we put to to avoid like the misuse of the platform. So, a last question, please. Yes. Here, raise your hand again. Maybe yes. So uh, for you, Antoine, uh, could you explain why the people to participate at this uh, group or all that makes sense? Why the people come? And why the people search? And why the people? Uh, why the people find at this uh, events? So if I here well why do the people come why why why, why? why? Um, we're living in a very individualistic uh, society and um, and like youngsters stay with youngsters rich stay with rich poor stay with poor and i think that there's a real need of social integration <coughs> we we thought we first uh, thought uh, disco soup um, it was uh, using uh, conviviality to fight against food waste. But like most half of the time, people use uh, the fruits of the food waste to create conviviality in their local neighborhood. So our idea was totally hacked, but there's no problem. Um, people want to, to create cheap action and easy action, uh, and they want to gather. Uh, and I think that it's a kind of, peeling carrots is a kind of yoga. People need those stuff like gardening, cooking together. It's a, it's a way of, uh, of discovering uh, one's neighbors, one's family. And uh, it's, it's a physical need, I think, that our current society doesn't feel. And uh, this is why people come to Disco Soup, and this is why I think people come back to Disco Soup. Because... Uh, they don't eat together anymore with friends. They don't eat together anymore with society, uh, with uh, with uh, their friend, family, and uh, they, they take the opportunity. Thank you. Um, well, to to close this panel, uh, I would like to talk very briefly about um, one big uh, event that is coming at the end of the, this year. Uh, you've probably all heard about the COP21 the climate conference that happens um, in December in Paris. Um, maybe you have some um, feedbacks or some ideas to share with us about how to create citizen engagement for this major um, thing, which is the COP21. Uh, I take this occasion also to uh, say that we have a full workshop on this, how to create citizen engagement for the COP21. It will happen on Friday at 4.30. Uh, and Roxanne is going to uh, organize all this. It happens at the camp. So please come again on, on Friday to talk about it. And now we are only doing a, a teaser like for, for, the, for your workshop. <laughs> um, actually, um, for the COP21, I think there's a lot of different uh, people who are going to be involved. And one of the conclusions that we will have on this time is that, as you say, the richer, the poorest, the, the people from Asia or from Europe, we all are uh, 
concerned by climate. And so I think uh, uh, one of the things we would have to do is to create, to create a diversity of events and a diversity of, uh, of forms of mobilization so that at the end of the COP21, like every, everybody will feel concerned and not like forgiving it for or letting in for tomorrow. So it's, it's more like a challenge that the one that already concerned about this thing uh, will have to face like how to, which word or which action will we find to convince the, the, the neighbor. The good fit yeah. for everybody, okay. Yeah, so creativity is open, I think. Alison, any idea about the COP21? For COP21, uh, I would like, to, in terms of a citizen engagement strategy, I'd like to see us do more visioning about what uh, a stable climate and a happy, just future would look like. I think that we dedicate a lot of energy to talking about how bad it's going to be, but I also think that we're an incredibly resilient species and that there's a lot of good that can come out of that too, so let's talk about what, what this new world looks like. Um, on the report about food waste of Guillaume Garraud, it said that uh, if food waste was a country, it would be the third biggest country uh, emitting uh, greenhouse gas effects. So uh, I have this project which is called uh, Croc 21, uh, which is like, I, I, I really resent going to, uh, to an event uh, at Conseil de Paris, uh, at uh, ONU, and so on and so forth. And they speak about climate, and then I go to the buffet, and I see uh, grapefruit from Florida in discardable uh, <laughs> bottles, and then uh, fruits that are not seasonable. And so I really engage you to go to Disco Soup. This is a concrete action you can do for COP21. I also engage you to go to the website uh, makesense.org, because there's a lot of social entrepreneurs that do really great stuff about recycling, about fighting against uh, global warming, and you can really make the first step really easily. It lasts two hours, four hours, it's funny. Thank you. So you must be happy with the, the Wisher Fest then. Yes. No I, food waste at Wisher Fest. Everything will be uh, And no eaten. waste at all, I think even. Yes, and zero waste in general, of <laughs> course. Uh, thank you, uh, Alison. Roxanne and Antoine.